If you're looking to build a new gaming PC, choosing the right CPU and GPU combo is arguably the most critical choice of all. Get this right and you're going to get great performance, minimise bottlenecking and have a great starting place from which you can choose the rest of your parts. That's why today, having tested all the latest CPUs and GPUs on the market, I'll be recommending the ones that work the best together and comparing the gaming performance of each combo at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. Let's do this. The Corsair Titan series is here. Corsair's latest lineup of 240mm, 280mm and 360mm of coolers feature Corsair's new flow drive cooling engine with a three-phase pump for higher flow rates, higher efficiency and better cooling. Cap swap compatibility allows you to change the top plate of your cooler, while IQ Link support and Magnetic Dome RX fans round off a design that's ready to keep your CPU cool under pressure. Check out the range at the first link below. Before jumping into my favourite combos for a range of different budgets, let's start with some important context about the CPU and GPU market right now because it's kind of a little bit complicated. Now on the GPU side things are more simple. We have full lineups from AMD and Nvidia. Obviously the lower the number the lower end the card so it ranges right from the 4060 and RX 7600 on the low end through to the 4090 and 7900 XTX on the high end of the market. On the CPU side of course you've got Intel's Core i3, i5, i7 and i9 lineups while AMD have their Ryzen 5, 7 and 9. AMD seem to have abandoned Ryzen 3 so if you're on the very very low end you want to consider a bottom of the barrel Ryzen 5 or an Intel Core i3 CPU. Now as far as new chips go AMD have released their Ryzen 9000 chips. This is the Ryzen 7 unit. These had some slightly lukewarm reviews, providing not a great deal of performance improvement over the previous gen Ryzen 7000. And that will of course be taken into account in my combination recommendations today. On the Intel side, there's been some problems with the i7 and i9 chips particularly, and we are expecting new Intel CPUs in the next month or so. Their new Core Ultra 5, 7, 9, and hopefully some low end 3 chips as well. As far as X3D CPUs go, these are basically AMD's supercharged gaming chips that have more cash on board to alleviate bottlenecking. We only have Ryzen 7000 X3D on the market right now. It looks like Ryzen 9000 X3D may have been delayed to next year. We we're originally expecting it to have already been announced. Now this turbulence in the market actually makes selecting the right CPU and GPU combo kind of complicated but also provides a bit of an opportunity to bag yourself a good deal. And with Amazon's prime big deals day coming up and obviously you've got Cyber Monday and the Black Friday sales which seem to last for like the whole of October and November nowadays, it's a good time to figure out what the best options might be. So what then are the best choices? Well let's take a look at the best options for under $300 and I'll work through some more expensive ones as we go. Now my base level combo is going to use this, the AMD RX 6600 and the AMD Ryzen 5 5600 non-X. Now this combo relies upon last gen parts to get better value for money. The CPU for example is AMD's older AMD M4 platform, but still offers up 6 cores, 12 threads and decent clock speeds. The GPU comes from AMD's last generation Radeon 6000 lineup. We're currently on 7000 with 8000 expected next year. Now recommending older previous gen parts isn't something I always love to do, but actually it doesn't matter. And that's because the generational gains we've seen recently have just been a bit poor. I mean yes the 5600X is a lot slower than the Ryzen 9600X which launched recently. However in the vast majority of games that you're going to be playing on this GPU, things like Fortnite, Apex, you're not going to notice really any difference. What's more, the 5600 non-X can commonly be found for just over $100, which is nearly half the price of the higher end Ryzen 76 and 9600X chips, while the 6600 can commonly be found for under $200 USD. For a little bit more, you can step up to the 6600 XT for a slight performance bump. Truth be told, there aren't many GPUs around at this price point that make a lot of sense. And while the 6600 is not the perfect card in every way, VRAM for example is constrained to only 8GB, but honestly, at the level of performance this card offers, that should be totally fine. The first game on the list to test in not only this combo, but all of those today, is Black Myth Wukong. It's a challenging title, and that shows in the average FPS figures achieved here. At 1080p high settings, we were at just 40 frames per second on average, demonstrating where an affordable CPU and GPU pairing like this can struggle in newer AAA titles. Alan Wake 2, which is next, 
context was higher, moving above the 50 FPS average mark and therefore delivering a far more playable and enjoyable gaming experience. This was using the similar 1080p high settings preset. Apex Legends ups the frame rate ante, where at 1080p high settings it returned around the 165 FPS mark, that's a little better, 6600, with a smooth enjoyable gaming experience that actually borders on being pretty competitive. Fortnite was tested at 1080p competitive settings throughout the whole video, allowing you to compare every single combo, and here, the 6600, delivered over 200 frames per second on average. Great to see, similar level of performance really to Apex Legends. Finally, I tested every combo at 4K in Hogwarts, again just to give a point of comparison throughout every single pairing that I've selected, with around 35 FPS on average. Now, this isn't that high and it's not that enjoyable, but at 4K on such a budget-oriented GPU, it was actually slightly more than what I'd originally expected. But what if you've got a bit more money to spend than this? What if you want to spend $500 total on your CPU and GPU combo? Now for this, I'm gonna recommend a component I wouldn't normally like to recommend alongside one of my favorite CPUs on the market, the AMD Ryzen 7600. Now this is Nvidia's RTX 4060. And as far as GPUs under $300 go, it's the best of a bad bunch. The alternative from AMD would be their RX 6750 XT, but that commonly breaks the $300 mark and when combined, with our $200 Ryzen 5, that pushes us over the $500 price point. Look past the reputation this card has though and look at the performance and you'll see it paints a slightly different picture. Take Black Myth Wukong as the first example. When testing this combo at 1080p high settings, the build was commonly hovering around the 55 to 60 FPS mark, a frame rate that is more than adequate for this kind of title. Alan Wake 2 is similar with pretty much identical settings, 1080p high once again, returning around the 60 FPS marker in the in game average. Apex Legends and Fortnite delivered much higher frame rates as you'd expect from a shooter title, with Apex returning over 200 FPS during combat at 1080p high settings, and Fortnite returning over 200 FPS at 1080p competitive settings. We also tested every combo at 4K in Hogwarts Legacy to give a good point of comparison across the whole of today's video. And while the build undoubtedly struggled here, returning over 30 frames per second, this is meant to be more of a point of comparison than an attempt to show this combo work well at 4k because well it, it doesn't and that all told is why i'd recommend this as the best combo for under five hundred dollars. Now for my next combo, the CPU choice is going to stay exactly the same. The GPU choice is what I'm going to change, and that's because, truth be told, the Ryzen 5 7600 has enough power for multiple cards in the mid-range. This is the AMD RX 7700 XT. Now when this card first launched, it wasn't my favourite GPU on the market. Fundamentally, it was too close in price to the better performing 7800 XT to make sense. AMD though, like they seem to do with every single launch, have bottled it on the price and, um, well, now it's cheaper and it makes more sense than the 7800 XT, which is what I recommended previously. This is a card that offers superb 1080p performance, like you're talking 1080p ultra great FPS, but can also move up to 1440p with very few issues, and has the 12 gigabytes of VRAM that I like to recommend on 1440p GPUs. Paired up with the 7600 with its 6 cores, 12 threads, and power efficient 65 watt DDP, and performance is great. Black Myth Wukong to start us off at 1440p delivered a good starting result with a working average of around about 50 frames per second. You may want to drop to 1080p and you can see here why the 7700 XT is a little more at home at that low resolution, but the frame rate was still playable and the game looked pretty good. Alan Wake 2 was fairly comparable but a little better, 1440p high, delivered over the 60 FPS mark on average, hovering primarily around 64 to 65 frames per second, better than the 50 frames achieved in Black Myth Wukong. Apex Legends was expectedly higher at 1440p with an average of a 170 FPS, placing it more in the realm of competitive and giving you enough frame rate for an FPS upper hand. Fortnite at 1080p competitive pushed frame rates even higher, with around 240 frames per second averaged across our test. In our 4K benchmark at Hogwarts Legacy, frame rates were approaching a more playable level compared to previous and cheaper combos in the region of 52 frames per second on average. And all of this makes this combo a fantastic choice for the $600 price point. Now if you've got a bit more money to spend again and you want to spend, say, 
$750 on your CPU and GPU. You can see the GPU gets beefier, and with the CPU, we're just gonna add an X onto the end. This is the 7900GRE and the Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, the CPU, the only difference really here is clock speeds, more power, slightly better single thread performance, which is gonna help in most games. A lot of games aren't really very well CPU optimized, while the GPU, being AMD 7900GRE, provides significantly more gaming horsepower. Now, I know what you're thinking, James, is there not a little bit of a bottleneck here? Yes. At low resolutions, 1080p in particular, where your CPU is more likely to be the bottleneck than the GPU, this combo is graphics heavy. However, stepping the CPU up to a Ryzen 7 would knock another $100 into the combo and force me to downgrade the GPU to something like a 7800 XT, which would undoubtedly provide less performance. This is a combo designed primarily for 1440p gaming, which you can see from the benchmark numbers that we ran. Again, starting in Blackmyth Wukong, this time testing at 1440p to reflect the higher power and price of this combo, and the pairing delivered an average of over 80 frames per second on average. Alan Wake 2 up the ante with great visuals, achieving around 84 FPS on average, while Apex Legends returned over 250 frames per second in our testing of this combination. Fortnite again tested at 1080p competitive, give another good point of whole video comparison, and we actually managed to achieve the high 200s on the average frame rate front, while a quick check of the 4K Hogwarts gameplay and frame rates are starting to get better. Here the combo delivering 70 FPS, as of course we spend that bit more on the CPU and GPU. Move through to the sub $1,000 price bracket, and really this is a combo that lives at about 900 US dollars. Now this is Nvidia's RTX 4070 Super, and it's Nvidia's cheapest super GPU. And I've selected, perhaps rather controversially, to pair it up with the Ryzen 7 9700X. Let me um, do some explaining. Now the 4070 Super doesn't offer you really much different performance to the GRE in the last crucially cheaper combination. However, the ray tracing support is better. And while that won't matter to some people watching, for others, it does. You only have to look at the Steam hardware survey and latest market share data to see that plainly people buy Nvidia for the features. And whether you agree with that or not, it's just the truth. Now I've paired this up with the 9700X, which I said might be slightly controversial. Why? Because it doesn't really offer that much more performance than the 7700X. With that being said, I would expect the price of this to continue to fall and in the next six months or so be aligned with the 7700X. Performance is going to be similar with either chip and in our benchmarks of this combo, we found the following. Black Myth Wukong was good at 1440p with an average of 69 frames per second, while Alan Wake 2 was even better with around 78 FPS at 1440p on this 4070 Super. Moving into the competitive esports titles and Apex delivered 223 FPS, while Fortnite was a little higher at 250 during our 1080p competitive gaming benchmark run, while in the final test at 4K in Hogwarts Legacy, frame rates were over 60 FPS throughout, with an average of 65 frames per second. That then is my favorite combo for the $900 price point. Move through to a slightly higher budget, and if you're looking to spend $1,200, this is where things get really very exciting. Now this is the RTX 4070 Ti Super, and I'll be pairing it up with AMD's legendary 7800X3D for a $1,200 combo that kills it. Now, this is the fastest gaming CPU on the market right now, and that's why I've gone for it. This is one of the fastest GPUs. In our graphs, it's gonna be in the top sort of five or six cards on the market right now, only really outflanked by the 4090, 4080, and the 7900 XTX. The 70 Ti Super provides comparable performance to the 7900 XT. You'll pay a little bit more for this card over the AMD variant. Again, that's plainly down to things like better ray tracing and DLSS support. If you want an all AMD combo, sure, swap this out for a 7900 XT. And as you can see from the on-screen gaming benchmarks, the two cards are really very marginal in the vast majority of rasterization titles. Turn on ray tracing, however, and things are a slightly different story. In Black Myth Wukong at 4K this time around, the build delivered okay results. Frame rates were lower than you might like at around the 45 FPS mark, representing how hard this game is to run, and your mileage will undoubtedly be better by tuning the resolution down from 4K to 1440p. Alan Wake 2 saw results that were significantly better, with around the 70 frames per second mark throughout our testing, delivering something that's undoubtedly more playable than what we found in Black Myth Wukong. Apex Legends at 4K was also really good, with frame rates well over the 150 frames per second mark on average, providing a great competitive gaming experience. Fortnite again at 1080p competitive, to give another good point of comparison, this is the first combo to break through the 400 FPS mark, while finally in our 4K test of Hogwarts Legacy, we unsurprisingly saw the best results yet, with an average of around 80 FPS the 
entire way through. So then, that wraps up pretty much all of the mainstream combos, but what if you've got a little bit more money to spend? And James, why haven't you recommended any Intel CPUs in the lineup today? Now that's not because Intel chips are bad. They aren't. They just don't often make the most sense right now, at least until Core Ultra finally launches for gaming only scenarios. This i7 chip, despite having had a few problems with microcode, is a better CPU for most of these graphics cards if video editing, rendering or streaming is your go-to. Plainly, it has a lot more cores than its Ryzen counterparts, and while some of them are slower efficiency cores, they can make a lot of sense. I'm not excluding Intel in this video because it's cool to do so, right? Everyone's building AMD CPU rigs right now. I think Intel will soon be back in the game, and for all of our sakes, I really hope that range true. Anyway, now I've caveated this video slightly, what do you buy if you've got an unlimited budget? Well, for gaming, you buy the 4090, again with the 7800X3D. This is going to be an awesome shout for all the AAAs, esports titles, ray tracing, DLSS, you name it, this thing's going to do it. However, if you want a build that's more akin to productivity applications, consider the i7-14700K or the Core i9. You can see that in Black Myth Wukong at 4K high, we saw some great results, well over the 60 FPS and closer to 70 frames per second on average. Alan Wake 2 pushes things even higher, breaking through the triple digit 100 frame per second barrier with a gaming experience that looks frankly fantastic. While Apex Legends was buttery smooth at 4K, delivering just shy of 250 frames a second. Fortnite was ace, as you might expect, nearing the 400 FPS mark on average during this benchmark. Pretty nuts. Well, in our 4K test of Hogwarts Legacy, the build delivered around 140 FPS. This is far higher than any of the other combos, and you can see how at 4K, there really start to be some sweet spots between spending enough to get a great gaming experience versus perhaps spending a little too much, as I've done here, with the 4090, a card that is undoubtedly very, very pricey. Now, to be clear, I don't think you should buy these components of the highest end combo. Why? We are expecting a 5090 potentially to be announced at CES. We are expecting new Core Ultra 9 CPUs, not Core i9, Core Ultra 9 CPUs, and potentially Ryzen X3D as well, either at the end of this year or in the new year next year. I got a bit of flack on a recent Best GPUs video from people who said, look, James, you shouldn't buy any of this stuff. You should just wait. Now, I don't necessarily agree that that's the case because I think you could wait forever. And by the time you've actually seen the new hardware release and had time to pick it up, we could be in March or April of 2025. And we want to get gaming now. However, on the high end of the market, it is worth considering that there are some important new releases on the horizon very shortly and ones that may warrant you consider waiting out before building your next gaming PC. I'll link all the parts mentioned in today's video at the affiliate links in the description down below. If you enjoyed this one, go subscribe. Thanks for watching. And as always, I really hope we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.